Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this session. And I think it is really unexpected to have so many people here this afternoon. Because if I didn't have the presentation, I think I would definitely go out and enjoy some sightseeing this afternoon. So thank you very much. And today I want to talk about the live migration we've been doing at Alibaba Cloud. Uh, and this includes the, the challenges and problems we've met uh, during the process we, we're trying to Im employ this technology to our cloud. And uh, we have done some performance tooling and a robust improvement to enable it to work fine with our cloud. So most of my, my topic will focus on the difference to do a migration in between the, the migration in the virtualized environment and in the cloud. And at last, I will show some of the live migration application in our cloud to intrigue uh, how powerful these tools can help us to improve the efficiency in the cloud. Before we go, go into the details, let's we have a quick review about the traditional live migration in virtualization. Uh, this picture illustrates the traditional live migration. The top, the top layer is a source host and the lower layer is a destination host. In the pre-copy pre procedure, memories are copied from the source to the destination iteratively. And then, uh, some, um, sometimes later, the iterative becomes to congregation and uh, the VM is post, and then the last memory is copied with state, oh, sorry, with device status and VM status. So we, we refer to this, this time that VM stopped as the VM downtime, and then the VM will, will be start running at the, at the destination, and, uh, and also the storage will be reopened, network will be re reconnected. But in Alibaba Cloud, um, what we required, what's the difference between the traditional uh, live migration with our cloud is, as this picture shows, we, what we require is that not a single virtualized instance ma migrating. As the picture illustrates, at the lower side, we have cloud disk, VPC network, and the upper, outside, we have security services, load balance services, and other cloud services. So we require that, or we command that, love migration should be transparent to the whole cloud system, not the VM itself. Another challenge we have is that because the scale of our, of our cloud is increasing every day, so the hardware and software back compatibility is also a very big challenge for us, how to migrate between different versions of hardware and software. Another way is a robust love migration. Uh, as the stableness is a very crucial, crucial parameter for the cloud, so we can see that uh, our live migration have a 90% of success rate. We need to, and it, very, and it is very often to say that almost every time some components will not return what you expected at the migration. So what, what, when we, what should we do when something error happens to the, to the migration? So in order to deal with all these things, as we can see from this picture, the migration operations required in the cloud becomes several times incre increased. S many of operations should be done in the control system. Some should, should be done in the virtualized plane. And other cloud services also ne need to be coordinated to, to prepare some um, operations coordinately. And what is worse is that all these operations are re relevant to each other and they should be done uh, Mm, defined orderly way. So what should we do? The first thing we think about is to 
um, like the migration in the traditional virtualization in environment, we define the migration ste steps into five steps. And uh, for each step, we uh, defined uh, ent status entrance standard, which means that when the migration want to go from one step to another, every component should, uh, should enter their defined state. Like if we want to uh, enter the pre-migration, the disk must be opened with read only and the session copy must be start. So any operations in this status field and would, cost, would cause the whole migration to be fall back. This have, this have three advantages. The first one is that after decoupling, many of the operations could be done in a paralyzed way. And the second is that we do not um, care about the internal implementation of the specific department. The implementation becomes decoupled. Then the optimization can be performed to uh, can be performed uh, due to the bonus of the de of the decoupling. The first one is that critical path parallelism. After um, after the cre this is used to to reduce the downtime so that things can be done in parallel. And another operation is that heavy operations in the cloud is dismantled and rearranged, like a BDRA flush and session copy. Some uh, has been put ahead of the critical path and some been postponed. In the virtualization, we also add a pre-last copy state. This is used to, be, this is used to uh, make the VM downtime to be stable and uh, uh, to be stable, uh, especially when the VM had a sudden surge of the load uh, when we try to switch the running host. Unlike the, unlike the QMU at the upstream, we do not compress the memory as throughout the migration. We only compress the last co copy of the memory. So to, this is used to alleviates the CPU impact to the host. And it, it is also as useful as uh, compression the memory throughout the live migration. Another thing we have done is the cloud disk optimization. At first, the file descriptor, descriptor at the destination is open read only at the destination. And then the source will close FD. And after the VM transfers, its, transfers the running host, the destination will reopen the FD with the read and write flag. But however, what we find is, is that closing FD in a distributed file system is very time consuming, as a lot of uh, metadata and negotiating messages should, will be transferred between the client and the server. So here we introduced a post operation for the FD. It is just a very light action since it is only block IO from the, block IO from the host. So that the destination can be, can open the, reopen the FD with read write operation very, as soon as the migration happens. It just likes to tell the file system that take it easy I'm just in between of the migration. And in the VPN, VPC and SNDN network, uh, a lot of migration optimization should be made too. Because in the traditional, net, in the VPC and SDN network, the management of the network is removed from the switches and routers to a centralized manager. So when we do a migration, like we migrate VM1 to another host, we, we have to notify the centralized network manager that we, uh, the migration begin and you should install the new flow rules to the new host. But it's very time consuming to, to wait for the net manager to install all these flow rules one by one. 
and it really takes some passion, patience to just wait. Mm, in order to solve this, so we have investigated a lot of things in VPC and SDN network. At last, we found that in SDN, um, in SDN scenery, the fallback of a SDN of in, a net, in the SDN network is quite similar with the migration here. So, some idea of the fallback of SDN was brought in. When we migrate VM from the source to the destination, a relay forwarding route is established between the source host and the destination host. But it is not enabled as the VM is keeps running on the source. When the, when, when the VM's running state transferred from the source to the destination, the relay forwarding route is then enabled and it collects all the packets that received in the source and forward, forwarding them to the to the destination host, which will ultimately be sent to the VM1 in the destination. And after a few times, the flow routes will be eventually installed on the host like VM2 and VM1. And then VM2 and VM1 will talk directly. And this, this introduced the, the network break time a lot. Also in the VPC network, we we need to copy the network session tables and we copy it as the memories iteratively. As we can see from the previous picture, what we require, we require that the migration should be friendly to the cloud services, which means that the, live, the cloud services should stay intact when we're doing the live migration. And this has, usually when, when it has an exception, it usually have, have two reasons. The first one is that indirect VM host relationship, which means that the client cloud services has some information stored on the source host. So when we're doing the migration, all this information should be migrated as a memory from the source host to the destination. Another category is that direct VM host relationship, which means that the cloud service is architecturally attached to the location of the VM, like we have shown the, the like we we have shown the picture here. A, cl um, a cloud service which is based on the DBDK in, as a part of networking pro processing system. When the, when, the, when the migration of the VM happens, the DPTK usually get confused because the packet from the same flow may come from a different network queen. <clears throat> there are many ways to, to fix this. One way is to just do a rescheduling in the, in the DPTK in the software, um, but this will result in some pen performance penalty. So we talked to our device providers, and after a few discussions, we decided that um, the provider of, of the devices should modify their firmware and offer a new NIC firmware, which will reschedule the package according some, to some invariant parameters in the package. So, in order to make live migration work in our system, we have done a lot of efforts to make the, the cloud ecosystem of our cloud friendly to the live migration. And this really takes a lot of effort to do so. Last but not least, the control system. The most important thing we do, we tried in the control system, is to downwards the time critical operations from the control system to the virtualization plane. So as we finished, the architecture of the migration becomes as follows. Most of the important time critical operations is finished in the virtualization plane. And the manager is, this allows the manager to focus on the migration 
trigger point, like when to trigger live migration, or if we need to cancel the migration now. So that control system can mainly focus on the control policy. After all this optimization being employed, the test data, uh, we can show, it is, this is the test data we, we currently have in our cloud. In order to, able to, to easy the compar comparable of the, these data, so I just show the migration of an idle guy, guest or with some stable, stable stress because the migration is very sensitive to the instant VM stress. As we can see that currently we have a VM downtime around 70 to 80 milliseconds. And even we have some stress on it, it is still very small. I think it is bearable in the cloud. Uh, before all these migrations being made in our cloud, uh, we have um, maybe ju just like uh, when we first done the migration in our cloud, uh, we have uh, after we have doing some fixes and enable the live migration, um, the the VM downtime is about around 18, 18 seconds. So after all these works has been done, the downtime has become to turn down to from the 18 seconds to the 100, 100 milliseconds. So after all these things have done, I think migration can be, can gradually to take effect in our cloud. So what is the value it brings to us? The first one is server maintenance. The hardware, you, the hardware malfunctions a lot, but most of the time, it is not fatal. So for these not unfatal errors, we can just migrate all the VMs to a healthy host, which, and then the host can, the error host can be repaired and uh, repaired and uh, used again. But it, and all these hosts, and all these may, operations made the, made the customer of our cloud immune to the hardware failure. In addition to the hardware failure, failure kernel and firmwares need, softwares need to be upgrading too. Although we have enabled the live patching, live patching and hot, hot upgrade technology in our cloud, but sometimes, like kernel and firmwares, they still need to, they still need the host to be rebooted to take effect. So we build a rolling system in our cloud, which is attached to our Alibaba maintenance system. The rolling system, we are gradually trying to migrate VMs on the NC and trigger the maintenance system to upgrade the, the kernel and firmware in the cluster, and this table shows some improvements we've got after the kernel and firmware upgrading. We can see that an average of about 8% improvement is obtained after the whole cluster upgrading. And all, the, and all these things made these old machines brighten again. We've also tried some advanced cloud scheduling technologies in our cloud, like resource defragments and, and resource balance. Refresh resource defragments means that from the view of the cluster, we still have plenty of unused resources in the cluster. But when we're trying to allocate a VM with more CPU res which requires more CPU resource and the larger memory, we, mm, but we find that we cannot find an available host in the whole cluster because the resources have been fragments. And live migration allow us to reorder the VMs, the, the location of the VMs in the cluster, and thus can help us to increase the usage of the cloud 
of the cluster. Resource balance is used when there is a surge of the CPU usage or memory usage in the host, and then the VM will be, migration will be triggered to, to avoid the con contention in our cloud. Also, the live migration can use to, to help the power management of the whole cluster, but there is a, slot, a lot of things need us to be done in our cloud. So it is on our to-do list. After all, the, all these things have done, live migration is gradually taking a very important role in our cloud. But still, some of the challenges need to be fixed. The, the first one is the SROA, IOA, or pass-through live migration. This is not a new problem, but it is getting worse and worse in our cloud because more and more devices start to using SROV or pass-through in our cloud to improve their performance. But currently, most of solutions related to, the, to this device migrating is focused on the hot plug of these devices. But um, uh, we don't think that it is practical in the actual production environment. The worst thing is that the SROV and pass-through makes the guest aware of the live migration, which is really frustrating. Because before doing KVM research, KVM live migration, we have been made a lot of effort in Zen to enable the Zen live migration in our cloud. And like Zen, Zen have, Zen's live migration is relied on the API to suspend the VM. So the the drivers in the VM are in, in, involved to do the live, migra live migration. And this is all we have been doing a lot of message, a lot of efforts to handle different drivers, different versions of drivers, and different VM distributions. This guest aware is really frustrating. And uh, another way is to Another thing I want to mention is how to use lab migration well in the cloud. As currently we can see from the graph, we have a variety of instance types in our cloud. Some, some of them focused on the performance of the VM. Some fi are fixed on the price. So they have different requirements to the service levels or the robustness of the migration of the service the cloud can offer. So, so it is very important to, to, when we need to do the migration, to find which VM to be, should be migrated and when should the, should the migration to be taking place and where to migrate this VM and how to migrate the VM. Another, another thing that is difficult to handle is that the, we have um, heterogeneous architecture in our cloud, like KVM, Zen, GPU, and FPGA, all these devices are included in a cluster. So how to navigate through these heterogeneous architectures is, a, is also a very difficult thing to de deal with. Okay, I think all about is about, since I want to introduce about the, what we have done is the LAM migration. Any questions? Okay, thank you.